All right. Today's video, I'm going to continue with the two Dutch Shepherd puppies. And we have some new stuff today. So I'm going to keep on as we go because probably going to be about another six months to a year of adding new things by the week. So last time I was showing all the complicated stuff already that we've been doing and prepping these two for elite high level protection training in the end. Now there's two aspects generally to all exercises. So for example here we started them with walking backwards and there's a toy version like a trick version play version and then we have a barking version okay so when it comes to protection most scenarios we're gonna have the two aspects okay so I'm gonna show you both so for example again the dog to follow backwards in heel so we have the play version that you can do as a trick with your dog you know or as fun but it doesn't have barking attached it's not protection specific so that is this version yes good okay no barking it's just following the leg and staying in position right focusing on the owner now the protection version we want staying with the leg but not looking at the owner it's looking ahead at the object that we told it to bark at okay which is setting up for later protection when we have an attacker right so object attacker same thing so we're just teaching the dog to focus on that object and talk on command at the object and keep with the leg the same now look a little different right because there's a lot of energy and you know passion so we turn that talking on it changes the look and it's not as tight we don't really care that it's that tight when we're in a protection scenario as long as they stay with us and follow us okay without getting out of control so that's this version <laughs> Okay, so the two scenarios, one, just follow the leg, no talking, very little talking, okay, and looking up and staying steady. Second version, now we add a protection aspect to it, and now it's at the object, okay, for future protection skills, right, which leads to this. Okay, so that would be the end game of those exercises leading to the end result of a dog learning control right it's all about that controlling themselves while they're in aggressive state staying focused and torn between the two things and doing it well under tight control okay which is not an easy thing to do 
when you're trying to contain that passion and aggressive state. So those are the two versions for that, which the puppies were doing. Now, we also had been showing that Michael here in France had been doing all over the place and really challenging them, not just on a straight line, but all over the place in both angles, backwards, circular, all over the place, which makes things so much more difficult. Okay, so that is very difficult. It's really hard for dogs to, and he's, he's moving, right? Michael's really moving quickly. So that is very difficult <clears throat> for many reasons, and I've explained this in other videos. When you have a dog looking at something else and focusing, and you put them into aggressive state while they're focusing on something else, not your leg, you're also telling them that they have to stay with the body while it's peripheral, right? And stay here, but still see you here and be in an active, aggressive state while looking there. It is very difficult for the dog to handle, right? Have to move, move wherever the body's going, wherever the leg is going, and stay focused on what we told you to focus on, no matter where it is, and talk as much as possible while doing that, right? So, very complex, and and you're not going to see this done anywhere, right? At this level. This is like an unseen thing you will see in the world. This level of it. And puppy. Being able to hold that leg, right? And stay with, back for a round, talking, focus, containing itself, not to run off the body and go attack the object that we told it to bark at. So... Michael really raises the game too by the speed, right? You have like sports like Mondio French Ring where they have a little version of this and it's a path and the owner walks and it's very slow and not many dogs bark. The dog knows what's coming. It's a game. It's not real protection. And they wait and they know there's going to be a touch eventually and then they go grab the object on the decoy. Much, much higher level game than sports, right? I mean, different realm of difficulty than any dog sport we have. <laughs> That's why I'm always saying, don't compare dog sports to the stuff that I do in protection. You can't compare, right? This is way beyond. That's why these dogs cost big money, right? Because this is way out of sport caliber. So... Again, this is a very difficult exercise to create. Now, the new thing that we added to this is circling the body, right? So I have not shown this yet. It's new. Michael just started it. So again, we have the different versions. We have the play version. Shields! 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 
Shield! 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 Right, that you can do as a trick, just for fun. And then we take that and we have now turned it into a protection version. Okay, so the dog barking at the object, holding the body while it's stationary now, and knowing how to go around the body smoothly and around and guard the owner. Okay, stay against and guard their body and keep off whatever is out there and directing aggression towards the owner. The dog keeps itself in that spot all the time to block off any threat or attack. And that's the purpose of this exercise. <laughs> And there you see the actual protection version. For real life, and I always say this, you never know when you will need that dog or when your dog will be called on to act for you and actually use the skills it has been taught. And dogs who have these skills, which is rare, in real life protection dogs, rare, right? To have these elite skills, very rare. But it's setting you and prepping you and your dog for anything and any movement that has to happen in that scenario that you don't know how to move properly because you don't know if your dog knows how to move properly your dog is ready for it because he's done all the movements and learned how to follow the body and stay with you no matter where you're going. So there's a fluency that there's not going to be any confusion when that moment comes, if ever, that it won't be all over the place. Dog's confused, you're confused, you don't know what he'll do and won't follow, right? That's not the moment that you want to test that, <laughs> right? How good your dog is or what they would do. And obviously, if the dog never went through these things, they're never going to be good at it, right? Most protection dogs, if you ever need them, it's this, right? And you're stuck now with a crazy dog on the end of a line and trying to get away and it's pulling you this way and you want to get away, right? So that is not protection. That's insanity that is out of control that is lack of discipline lack of skills right now maybe it saves your life right but lack of skill and causes chaos so that's why to me these things are so important I'm always thinking reality and how do things really work in life if it ever comes to it and I'm always thinking of all the scenarios that could happen or possibly come about, right, as much as possible, to make sure that owner and dog are prepped for whatever may come. That is why these things are so important. And that is why these dogs cost so much money. All right, so now, big question everybody always right this is just a universal thing that comes to people's heads and questions right so here this is 
I'm going to show you now. Michael, for the first time, is going to take off all collars off the dog, right? It's going to be naked, bare, nothing on. And we could have done this a long time ago, right? Don't need the collars, don't. But going to test the conditioning he's done with them and how fluent they are, right? Knowing the game with no help, which he's been doing for a while anyway, but this will be the first time taking off all collars and putting them into Michael moving all over the place now to see how much mental control and all the skills built in, how fluent are they with no help to the dog, okay? While it's an active, passionate state. So here, Michael's going to take the collars off for the first time. Everything, no collars, bare neck, and do the exercise to see what the dog will do with no collars on. We're going to go into the most complicated situation that we can. We're going to see what we get. Good, good. Good. Okay. Perfect. Right? No, nothing. It's just the dog doing what it was taught to do and do it well in passionate state. Again, focusing on an object while talking, while trying to hold the leg in its peripheral and stay with him as much as possible. And he's moving quickly, right? All these things add so much difficulty to the exercise. Again, for the dog, it's very difficult with a lot of speed, right? And then all over these movements. So you see how fluent this puppy is with such a high level game, right? Now, this is why I always state, start young, start young, start your obedience game, eight weeks old, start your bite work game, very young, you know, 10 weeks old, eight weeks old, I start right away. But within the first, you know, three months of the dog's life, you should be starting the bite game the passion game. So I always say this, much easier to build anything and everything into a dog. When you start very young, the dog doesn't know better. So it's very easy to come off collars and all discipline or any help when you've done the game very well and started early and young. The later you start, the harder it becomes. And yeah, we'll always get the dogs off the collars and we'll always have it in the end just the same. Doesn't matter. But 
make life easy. Start very young, because when the puppy comes to you very young, they don't have a history. They don't know anything except for what you are showing them life is with you, right? If you let them do what they want, and no discipline, no rules, no training, no you know, showing them how to do things, how to bite, how to bite the pillow, how to out, building drive, building those obedience skills, right? Things become more challenging as the dog ages, right? So five, six months up, if you waited to there, you're still too, you're late. Not too late, but you're late because they've already, most people, they had them since eight months old to three months old, eight weeks old to three months old. You are letting months and months go by that dog's been just doing what it wants, no rules, how most people own a dog, right? Just let it be a dog, <laughs> right? And it becomes harder because they have a history already developed of not working, not using their minds, not listening, and this is, now you have to counter condition what they saw life with you as. You start eight weeks old, they don't know anything coming from mom, and this is what we've built in a lifestyle and an outlook that they don't have anything else to judge it, <laughs> right? Or look back on. So we mold it and we create a mental habit that they can't even help. It's just ingrained and it is what it is and they don't even know the difference. So the example here of Michael doing this, started very young, eight weeks, nine weeks old. And these are high level exercises, right? Not even just puppy stuff, this is high level. And being able to do with no collars on perfectly well in all directions and in an active, emotional, passionate state, which is the highest form of control, right? Regular obedience compared to that is a piece of cake. Getting a dog or puppy into a motion and getting that mind crazy but still being able to focus is as high as dog training gets in the world, right? And where it all counts to control that passionate mind and still having them keep a level head of the skills and holding their form of what they're supposed to do and not let the emotions get the best of them by breaking the command or the exercises right because of the emotion and passion that's where real dog training counts so that's just the example i always say again start young start young start as young as you can on other new things michael just started working with and again remember michael's never trained a dog in his life this is all new to him we've been doing this through skype miami here to france only through skype since they were eight weeks old and building all their skills only through Skype. So now he started working them together in obedience. And here's him doing now the exercise that we were showing in the past, some of them, and starting to get them to work together as a team with some of these things. Pets, seats, pets, seats, pets, yes! Good. Out. Reverse. <laughs> Finish. Center. Front. So, I fantastic. Just started this. It was really the first time 
there in those clips that he's ever really done it with them together. So, I mean, for the first time, it's fantastic the way they're working with each other with these certain exercises. And he's just starting. So, there'll be more and more. We pair them together, pair them together. We'll start doing protection exercises with them together. And as a, a double tag team, <laughs> right, against a decoy, against several decoys, and they'll have to work on Michael as a team together. So that'll be coming soon. Next few months we'll start doing that and I'll just keep showing progressions. All right, so I'm Richard Hines, America's dog trainer. Finish, reverse. Yes, good. Okay, so I want to point out something really cool. I've never done that before. Walk sideways, not backwards, but sideways, and she kept it perfectly.